Special thanks to Patreon supporter Brick Bros 2016 for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare204 here bringing you guys another Minecraft Cold War vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the Hawker Hunter F.6. The Hawker, the Hawker Hunter is a transonic British jet powered fighter aircraft that was developed by Hawker Aircraft for the Royal Air Force during the late 1940s and early 1950s. It was designed to take advantage of the newly developed Rolls-Royce Avion turbojet engine and swept wing design. And it was also the first jet powered aircraft produced by Hawker to be procured by the RAF. On the 7th of September 1953, the modified first prototype broke the world airspeed record for the aircraft achieving a speed of 727.63 miles per hour or 1,171.01 kilometers per hour. Uh, the aircraft saw many different uh, variations and uh, many different modifications to it and was basically the aircraft that replaced all first generation uh, jet fighters used by the RAF at the time. The uh, aircraft remained in service for quite a while. Uh, it was first introduced in 1954 and was retired from military service in 2014. So I uh, saw a pretty good service life, but it was definitely a more of a Cold War uh, air type of uh, aircraft and everything like that. Um, I do believe other nations probably uh, used it as well. Um, I believe the Indian Air Force, Swedish and Swiss Air Force all used them as well. Um, so pretty interesting. and. Uh, First uh, fighter. Anyways, this is a Patreon request, so I want to go ahead and give a special thanks to Patreon supporter Brick Bros 2016 for his continued support for the channel. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more than you guys already do, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is down in the description where you guys can pledge a small amount every month and basically support the channel. So uh, feel free to check that out if you guys are interested, and um, I really do appreciate all my Patreon supporters out there as they uh, really do help me out. So. Uh, feel free to take a, check out, take a look at it, the link is down in the description. So anyways, going ahead and taking a look at the uh, Hawker Hunter. Uh, this is the F.6 variant, which is just a bit of a more upgraded version. I think one of the main kind of key um, exterior components to this is the addition of drop tanks on the wings, which I thought was pretty, uh, pretty cool, so we obviously included those on the uh, aircraft. Uh, the aircraft itself is designed to be a fighter. Um, it did serve roles as a fighter bomber and obviously uh, ground attack and constant. So it basically served all roles, but it's uh, mainly looked to as kind of like a fighter uh, for the time. So going ahead and getting started, we have obviously the uh, front of it up here. It's got uh, two twin can, or it's got uh, twin cannons here, mounted on both sides here. I believe um, probably there are 20 mils. Uh, I would imagine around this time period, uh, the British using 20 mils on all their jet aircraft, so most likely 20 mils um, located up in the front there, and there was four clear um, visual ones there up in the front. We uh, have the cockpit here, obviously, moving our way back. Um, you can see we have kind of like the tr traditional kind of World War II slash uh, er, basically Cold War uh, RAF kind of camouflage they put on their aircraft using a kind of like a gray, or I should say more like a silver and green kind of um, camouflage. and. Uh, that's what uh, this aircraft has on it as well. Uh, we have the British Randalls on the uh, wings on both sides here. Uh, each wing has their drop tanks and also a little pod here, which look like possibly maybe a little missile pod or something of that sort. Uh, but I saw many pictures having it, so I decided to go ahead and include it. Uh, continuing on, we have an RAF Randall on the main back of the fuselage here. Uh, the Obviously, the vert stabilizer and the two horizontal stabilizers on both sides. Uh, it's a single jet engine, so uh, nothing fancy like that with the back there. And overall, it just screams kind of like that, you know, Cold War era type of aircraft. <clears throat> nice single engine and um, swept wing design and all that fun stuff. So, anyways, that's pretty much uh, the overview for the Hawker Hunter. Um, let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. Just a little quick uh, note for building this, we're going to be building this all in a uh, green kind of color and then we're going to go ahead and come back to it and put the camouflage on. So if you guys are interested in having the camouflage on it, just note that we're going to be building this all in green and we'll come back in here at the end of the tutorial and kind of put the camouflage on to, uh, you know, make it you know pop and everything like that. So um, anyways, let's go ahead and pop into the tutorial by beginning our first layer, which I believe we're going to be starting off with layer one, uh, but I'll let you guys know when we move on to it. So let's go ahead and start with our first layer. All right, guys, so moving on to our first layer, we'll be going ahead and start off with layers one through uh, two. 
So uh, the escalators here are just going to be establishing a little bit of a base for the aircraft and it's a lot easier for us to just to go straight into layers 1 and 2. 2 kind of is more of a uh, kind of structuring layer so we're able to kind of get a little bit more of a general idea on um, what stuff is going to go and how to uh, put stuff together. While we have the other layer which layer 1 is just putting the bottom on the fuel tank. So it's a little bit easier to start off with layer 2 so that's where we're going to start. If you guys are completely new to my aircraft tutorials, the way I like to structure these tutorials is like you half on camera, half off. What this means is I'll build the uh, center line of the aircraft. And since the aircraft is practically completely symmetrical on both sides, uh, what we would do on the one side of the aircraft, which is over here on the right side, we're going to copy it. We're going to have copied over to the left already. So we're going to do the center line on camera, the right side, and then just come to you guys in between layers to copy what's on the right side over to the left side. Uh, makes the tutorial a little bit easier for myself and uh, makes it so there's less mistakes. So uh, don't worry, and it's explained really well. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start off by going ahead and grabbing ourselves our iron trap doors. Now, if you guys do plan on building this thing landed, you will need to take into you know precaution how far off the ground you're going to want this thing positioned. So if we're building this thing landed, as you can see, we have the landed version down there. We need to make sure that this layer here, so these iron trap doors, are a total of two blocks away from the Ground. So basically I should say more of like two and a half blocks. So if we take a look at this, we have ground level right here and you can see our iron trap door right there just to show you kind of on this example here. We're going to go ahead and have something that looks just like this if you're building this thing close to the ground to be landed. So you can see you have your iron trap doors right here. Alrighty guys, so going ahead and moving on to our first layer, we're going to be going ahead and actually doing layers one through two. Now two is kind of an easier layer to go ahead and basically base one off of. Layer two is going to get a little bit more of the aircraft established. And one's just basically the bottom of the fuel tanks on the wings, so it's a little bit easier just for us to do one and two all in one go. Um, anyways, if you guys are completely new to my tutorials, the way I like to structure these is I like to do half uh, on camera, half off camera. So you can see I already have the left side and the center line of the aircraft built. We're going to be going ahead and copy that over to the right side, and it's up to you guys to copy what we do on the right side. Over to the left side, this aircraft is completely symmetrical besides one tiny little thing, which uh, isn't even that big of a deal. So, uh, you know, just do whatever we do on the right side over to the air side. And you guys will be good to go. Um, also, if you want to build the landed version, as uh, there is a landed version that is going to be, you know, that can be built from this version, uh, you're going to want to make sure that you start layer two off at the right level. So you can see here that this is layer two right here. You can see layer one is basically these top steps on the bottom of the, the external fuel tanks. You're going to want to make sure that you have a space of basically two and a half blocks, I guess you can say. So you have this top iron trap door. You can see it's a top one like this. If you look next to it, like a full block like that. And you can see we have that space from that iron trap door right here. And then you have two blocks solid of space before the ground level. Very important if you're building this aircraft for the uh, landed version because if you don't want to build it too high or uh, obviously too low to where it doesn't sit right. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take iron trap doors. We're going to place down a nice long row of iron trap doors down the center here. I'm just going to go ahead and use world edit just to make sure we get a nice accurate count. And we get a count of 15. So we have 15 iron trap doors running down the center there. Just like that. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and go to the to whichever direction you want this aircraft facing. So I'm going to have my aircraft facing this direction that way. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of two of quartz top sabs on the sides here. These three iron trap doors up here in the front. Uh, going back from those quartz top sabs, we're going to place down one, two, two, three, four, five, and six iron trap doors back from those three quartz top sabs. Once that's all done there, we then want to go ahead and grab ourselves uh, some place order blocks as we're going to need to count down to the sides here. So the best way for us to do this is just to go ahead and go to this last iron trap door we placed here on the sides. And we're just going to go ahead and make sure we count out a space to the side here. So for this, we're going to go ahead and count out a space of four to the side. So going from this iron trap door over here, one, two, three, and four. I'm just using purple wool for placeholder blocks just to kind of visually show the spacing. After that's done, we're going to place down a cobblestone wall followed by a polished anisite block and a cobblestone wall. We can now delete this, these placer blocks here if we, uh, we obviously don't want them in the final build so we can just delete them now. So from this uh, section here we're going to go ahead and build toward the front a little bit. So coming off the polished anisite block toward the front we're going to place down one, two, and three polished anisite blocks coming off of it like this followed by a skeleton skull like that. The skeleton skull for example should be in line with the second iron trap door back from this quartz top sub just to give you guys another kind of visual example on how that kind of connects. We then want to take cobblestone walls, we're going to place down one, two cobblestone walls off these two polished DSI blocks to work going toward the front, and same thing over here, two cobblestone walls like that. Now going toward the back side here, we're going to place down a row of one, two, three, and four uh, polished DSI blocks back, so you have your four up here, and then you're going to place down four going back in this direction. 
We're then going to place down a skeleton skull. On the end here, we're going to take cobblestone walls, place down one, two, and three cobblestone walls along the side here, and same thing over here, one, two, and three, just like that for the fuel tank. On the bottom here, we're going to go ahead and go to the bottom of the polished nanoset blocks that have cobblestone walls next to them, and we're going to place down a row of six here of stone brick top steps on the bottom there, and that's going to that's going to kind of do it for layer one on both sides there. We then want to grab ourselves some nerve brick slabs. We're going to go ahead and place down a nerve brick top slab coming off this uh, cobblestone wall, wall right here, so the third one from the rear here. And we're going to place down one, two, and three more nerve brick top steps going back from it, so you have something that looks like that. And kind of getting a little bit of an aerial overview of it, your aircraft so far should look something like this once you copy the other side over. And once that's complete, that is going to do it for layers one and two. With that, we can go and move on to our next set of layers, or our next layer, I should say, uh, layer three. All right, guys, move on to our next layer. We have layer three. Layer three is going to be a little bit more involved. We have a lot more going on and a lot more of the structure of the aircraft starting to get established in this layer. So uh, to go ahead and get started here, we want to go ahead and go to our first iron trap door. We have right up here toward the front of the aircraft against this section here with the three um, quartz top slabs. They're going to be on both sides there. We want to go ahead and place down a quartz full block on top of this iron trap door like this. We're then going to place down a, a spur, or basically one more quartz block coming off of this one right here, followed by a second and a third like that. So you have three quartz full blocks to can pass these two or this, these uh, quartz top slabs right here. So it sticks out three pass right here. We're then going to place down a nether, or quartz up, upside down stair, followed by a quartz top slab coming off that quartz upside down stair. Once that's done, we're going to go, ahead and go back to the quartz full block that's on top of the iron trap door. So this one right here. And we want to place down a row of quartz full blocks that goes back a total of 18 blocks. So again, from this quartz full block right here, we have 18 quartz full blocks going back from it. This should stick in total uh, four quartz uh, full blocks past to this iron trap door on the end here. On the very end of that row of 18 of quartz full blocks, we're going to place down a quartz upside down stair, followed by two stone brick top slabs coming off the quartz upside down stair. After that's all complete, we're going to go and now build off to the sides here. So the, that was the center line of the aircraft, and whatever we do over here on the right side, you're going to do it to the left side. So to go ahead and get started here, we're going to go ahead and go up to the front. We're going to go and place down a uh, dark oak fence gate that's kind of to the side here opened up of this uh, quartz upside down stair. So just like that on both sides there. We're then going to place down a quartz top slab that goes back from those uh, wooden trap doors with a sign on the side of the uh, top slab. Like that. After we have that done, we're then going to place down another uh, quartz top slab, followed by a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, um, and my bad, just uh, we're going to do eight quartz full blocks back. So we have a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight quartz full blocks after this quartz top slab here. We also want to go ahead and grab ourselves some signs, and we're going to place down a row of one, two, and uh, just two signs here on these two quartz full blocks, so basically the second and third one back from this one right here. After that's done, going ahead and going back here to this section, uh, we want to go ahead and continue our quartz, uh, basically full blocks. So we have our row of eight so far. We're going to go, and go 9, 10, 11, uh, 12 quartz full blocks back. When we get to this section here, we're going to switch to quartz stairs. We're going to place down one, two, and three upside down quartz stairs, followed by a prepare upside down stair. Just a little kind of check in here. This prepare stair on both sides should be in line with this last iron trap door right here. After that's done, we're going to take our... Uh, Quartz uh, stairs, we're going to go and continue on. We're going to place down one, two, and three more upside down quartz stairs, followed by a quartz top slab like that. After uh, that's all done, that's going to do it for this row here. We can move over to our next row to the side. So to go ahead and get started, we're going to go ahead and go to the quartz full block on the side here. This is going to be your fifth uh, block back. So we have one, two, three, four, and your fifth quartz full block in this row right here after these quartz top slabs. We're going to place down a quartz slab like this, followed by a second slab after it. We then want to place down a black bull block. After the black bull block, we're going to place down a quartz full block. Uh, we then want to go ahead and grab ourselves quartz stairs. We're going to place down a quartz upside down stair face in this direction, followed by a second quartz stair upside down so that we turn this stair into a corner stair. And then we're going to place down a quartz corner stair, come off this stair like so. We're then going to place down a quartz top slab and follow it up by placing down an iron trap door like so. Uh, once that's done, we're going to continue out to the sides here. So going from this quartz top slab here, we're going to place down a quartz upside down stair coming off of it like so. We then want to go ahead and place down a second quartz upside down stair after the stair. So like so. Um, once that's done, we're going to go and take our quartz top slabs. We're going to place down one uh, and two and three quartz top slabs back, followed by an iron trap door like so. 
For our next row out to the side, we're going to go and grab ourselves a quartz, of course, a quartz uh, top slab. So we're going to go to the second quartz top slab back in this row right here. One out to the side, followed by one and two more after it. And then we're going to place down two iron trap doors back like so. So looking at this from above, we should have something that looks just like this so far. Um, once that's done, go ahead and continue now. We're going to go to the second quartz top slab to the side here. We're going to place down an iron trap door coming off the side, followed by one, two, two and three after it. So you have a nice row of four there. Uh, for our next row out to the side, we're going to go ahead and go to the center two iron trap doors. We're going to place down two uh, iron trap doors come off the two center ones like so. Once that's all done here, we're going to go ahead and place down two end rods on top of these two cobblestone walls right here, just like that. We also want to go ahead and uh, grab ourselves some quartz uh, stairs, some quartz full blocks, and we're also going to need some stone brick slabs for the tanks here. So for this, next to this first uh, this first iron trap door here, we're going to place down a quartz stair, followed by one and two quartz full blocks after it. Um, then we then want to go ahead and actually move this back one so this iron this uh quartz stair here we're gonna move back one and then we're gonna place down two blocks behind it so just like that these two quartz full blocks should be next to these two iron trap doors like so um once that's done we're gonna place down a stone brick slab to rough this uh quartz full block here and then we're gonna place down two stone brick slabs coming off the front of this quartz stair just like that once that's done we're gonna go and take our end rods and place down two on this side right here coming off the basically right next to these two quartz full blocks and we also want to place down an iron trap door that's coming off the end rod right here on the back section like that. Um, after that's done, we're going to take some quartz stairs. We're going to place down one and two quartz stairs facing that direction on top of these just row nether bricks. So two quartz stairs with the backs facing toward the outside here. And then we're just going to place down a nether brick slab on top of the top slabs on both sides like that. On the back of this stair right here, we're going to place down an iron trap door followed by a second iron trap door going back from it. So looking at it from above, you should have something that looks just like this. And of course, you're going to take what we do on the right side. Flip it over to the left side and you'll have layer 3 complete. Layer 3 is kind of one of the more difficult layers because you're building a lot of stuff and kind of structuring a lot of the, what's going to be coming in the future layers. And uh, layer 4 is also going to kind of expand upon layer 3. But uh, after layer 4, it's going to be a little bit easier as we go on. So anyways, that's going to do it for this layer. Let's go ahead and move on to layer uh, 4. Alright guys, moving on to our next layer. We're going to go ahead and move on to layer 4. For layer 4, uh, as we get started, I want to go ahead and mention, of course, again, that we are going to be doing the aircraft in a nice solid green color. And we'll be doing the camouflage by putting polished DSA mixed into it and everything like that when we get to the end of the tutorial. So uh, just a little note there that if you are wanting to include the camo, it will be coming at the end of the tutorial. Anyways, to go ahead and get started, we're going to go ahead and go to the front up here. We're going to place down a green stink plate block on this quartz top slab on the very end here. It's the same quartz top slab that comes off this upside down stair. So just like this, a green stink plate block on top of it. Coming off the green stain plate block, we're going to place down a black wool block with a stone button that comes off of the very tip of the nose there like that. So we currently have this green stain plate block and black wool. Go back from this green stain plate block, we're going to place down a large row of green stain plate that's going to go all the way back here, uh, a total of 23 blocks. So in total, we should have 24 green stain plate blocks going back from the black wool block. So 24 green stain plate blocks like that going back. And it should end on top of this last quartz full block on the center like so. Once that's done, we're going to place down a glowstone block on top of this quartz upside down stair, followed by a orange stained glass block coming off the glowstone block. Um, once that's done, we're going to go ahead and go to the sides now. So to go ahead and to get started, we're going to go up here to the front. We're going to go to the first three green stained clay blocks back from the black wool block. We're going to place down a row of three of mossy cobblestone walls. We then want to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 green stink plate blocks back. Let me just double check our count here. Uh, 15 green stink plate blocks back from those cobblestone walls. After that's done, we're going to place down a blue wool block on the side here. After the blue wool block, we're going to place down a red wool block, followed by another blue wool block. We then want to place down two green stink plate blocks going back, followed by one and two mossy cobblestone walls, and then two cobblestone walls going back like so. Um, after that's done, we're going to go ahead and start working on the wings now. So for the wings, uh, we're going to go ahead and start off by grabbing ourselves black wool. We're going to place down a black wool block on top of this one from the previous layer, followed by a row of one, two, and three green stain clay blocks back, a dark liquid stair, and a dark liquid half slab after that. And then lastly, on top of this iron trap door on the end here, a wooden trap door. Uh, going ahead and continuing on from this black wool block, we're going to place down a second one coming off of it to the side, followed by a dark liquid top slab coming off that black wool block. Uh, continuing on, uh, we're going to place down a green stain plate block back from the black wool, followed by a dark oak wood stair and a dark oak wood corner stair. We're then going to place down a dark oak wood slab, come off the corner stair, and then a spruce wood slab 
after that dark liquid slab. Like so. Once that's done, going ahead and continue out to the side. We're going to place down a dark liquid stair coming off this uh, row 2 of black wool here, followed by a dark liquid corner stair coming off that stair. We're then going to place down a row of 1, 2, and 3, dark liquid half slabs back, followed by a spruce wood slab like that. After that's done, come off this uh, corner stair, we're going to place down a dark liquid slab, followed by 1, 2, 3, and 4 slabs back, and then another spruce wood slab like that. Again, going out to the sides here, we're going to start off with this iron trap door. We're going to place down a dark liquid slab on top of it, followed by one, two, and three dark liquid slabs back for a total of four, and another spruce wood slab on the end there, like so. For our next row over, we're going to go ahead and go to the second dark liquid slab from the previous row, dark liquid slab out to the side, and then we're going to place down a second one that goes back. However, this time, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a prepared slab. We're going to place down a prepared slab, followed by a dark liquid, uh, sorry, my bad, a spruce wood slab after the prepared slab. Uh, continuing now, we're going to go ahead and go to the second dark liquid slab again. We're going to place down a prepared slab right next to it. We also want to go ahead and grab ourselves a brick slab. And we're going to place down a brick slab, cut off the prepared slab, followed by another prepared slab and a spruce wood slab there on the end. Go ahead and continue on, come off the brick slab. We're going to place down a prepared slab out to the side, a dark liquid slab back, and a spruce wood slab like so. Lastly, on the end here, we're just going to go ahead and place down two dark liquid slabs on top of those two iron trap doors on the end there. For the wings so they look something like this uh one quick thing to note is that over here on the left side and the left side of the aircraft only we're gonna go ahead and go to the very edge of the wing these two dark liquid slabs and we're gonna place down a row of four of iron or of um end rods coming off the slabs like so for the end there and again that's only on the left side of the aircraft on the right side so just take that into consideration as well once that's done that's going to do it for layer four with that let's move on to layer five all right guys moving on to our next layer we have layer number for layer 5, we're going to go ahead and start off by going to the front up here. We're going to go ahead and go to the uh, green snakeway block, the first one after this black wool block. We're going to place down a dark liquid slab on top of it, followed by a dark liquid stair after the slab, and a green snakeway block behind that stair. We can go ahead and then skip a space of 4 if we want to. Uh, basically, in our row here, green snakeway that's going to go toward the back. This basically, this space right here is representing where you guys can put a little bit of an interior in if you want to include a little bit of a cockpit. Uh, you guys could even break out the bottom here a little bit to give you a little bit more space for the interior as well with the size of the aircraft um, but it's completely up to you guys and if not if you don't care about interior you can just go and fill it in with a solid row but anyways if you decide to skip this space of four we're then going to go ahead and continue on with our green stain gray blocks placing down one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and sixteen green stain gray blocks so basically it's going to stop here right before you get to in line with these mossy cobblestone walls. Once that's done, we're going to place down a spruce wood plank, followed by a dark oak wood stair, and then two dark oak wood slabs that come off that stair, like that for the back engine. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and build out to the sides now, so we're going to go ahead and go back up here to the front, we're going to go to this mossy cobblestone wall, we're going to place down a dark oak wood slab on top of it, followed by a dark oak wood stair, and a dark oak wood corner stair after that stair. After that corner stair, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, and six green stankway blocks back, a dark oak wood stair like this, which we're going to turn into a corner stair, but placing down an air stair right next to it, so you have a corner stair and a regular stair. After this regular stair of dark oak wood, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, and six more dark oak wood stairs back, giving you row seven here of regular dark oak wood stairs. We're then going to place down a prepare stair on top of this red wool block here, followed by one, two, and three dark oak wood stairs. After that third dark oak wood stair, we're going to place down a dark oak wood slab followed by a zombie head on the top of that mossy cobblestone wall and a skeleton skull at about a 45 degree angle on top of this cobblestone wall right here. Uh, once we have that done, that's going to kind of do it for the fuselage and we do have a little bit of additions to the wings. Not much though, um, pretty much just the connectors to the wings themselves. So to get started, we're going to place down a dark liquid slab on top of this black wool block. We're then going to place down one and two dark liquid slabs going toward the front. We also want to grab ourselves green carpet and after these three dark liquid slabs, we're going to place down two green carpet on top of those green stained white blocks. And we also want to go ahead and go to the black wool here. We're going to place down a green carpet on top of it and also on top of this dark oak wood top slab. Once we have that all done there, that is going to do it for layer 5. With that, let's go ahead and move on to our next layer, layer 6. Alright guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer number uh, 6. So for layer 6, to get started here, we're going to go ahead and place down another brick stair, which is going to be kind of in between this empty space, or if you decide to fill it in, the second green stink wood block. Basically right here, in between these uh, dark oak wood stairs and up a block, we're going to place down a narrow brick stair. Now on uh, both sides of the narrow brick stair, on top of the dark oak wood stair, we're going to place down a uh, zombie head, or a wither skeleton skull that's at about a 45 degree angle, like so. 
From off the back of this uh, never breaks tear, we're going to place down a row of three of light gray stained glass full blocks, and then we're going to place down a row of one, two, and three light gray stained glass panes coming off those three light gray stained glass full blocks. Coming off the uh, center row here of uh, light gray stained glass full blocks, we're going to place down a dark liquid stair, followed by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine uh, dark liquid slabs. After your ninth dark liquid slab, we're going to place down a dark liquid stair. Off the back of the dark liquid stair, we're going to go back one, two, three, four, and five green stink white blocks, followed by a spruce wood plank, which should be on top of this one from the previous layer, and also a cobblestone wall on top of this dark liquid stair on the back here. When we uh, get that with that, we want to go ahead and go back up here to the front. We're going to place down a zombie head on top of this green stink white block on both sides of this dark liquid stair at a nice kind of solid angle like that. Uh, we then want to place down a zombie head coming off like about like a 30-ish degree angle from the previous uh, score right here. So on the next screen, snake will block at about a 30 degree angle, uh, just like that for a little bit of shaping there after the cockpit. Uh, the last thing for this layer is we're just going to go ahead and go back here and do our horizontal stabilizers. So for this, we're going to go and place down a spruce wood top slab coming off this cobblestone wall, followed by one and two quartz top slabs going toward the front. Coming off this uh, spruce wood top slab here, we're going to place down a quartz top slab, followed by one quartz top slab going toward the front, and a spruce wood top slab going toward the rear. After that's done, we're going to place down a spruce wood top slab coming off this one right here, followed by a quartz top slab going toward the front. And then lastly, we're going to place down a quartz top slab coming off this spruce wood top slab here, and one spruce wood top slab back, just like that for the horizontal stabilizers. Once that's all done there, that is going to do it for layer 6. With that, we'll move on to our last final layers here, which are basically going to consist of... Uh, layers uh, 7, 8, and 9. And once we have those layers complete, we'll pretty much have the uh, main part of the aircraft done. So with that, let's go ahead and move on to our last final layers. All right, guys. So before we dive right into finishing off this build, we do need to go ahead and make one uh, component of the build that which is much needed. So for this, we're going to go and get a crafting table out, a blue banner, and some rose red um, to go ahead and make a banner. So the banner design itself is really simple. You can kind of see it back there on the tail of the aircraft. It's basically a blue and red line. Pretty simple. We're going to go ahead and place down a blue banner in the crafting table to the left side. And we then want to go ahead and take our rose red and we're going to go ahead and place down uh, basically two rows of three here and then column here. This is going to go ahead and create an equal space, basically half split, the blue and red banner, which we can go ahead and grab and we'll be using for this layer. So once we have that complete, we can now go ahead and move on to this layer. Alright, for our last layers, we have layers 7, 8, and 9. So these layers are pretty much going to be mainly focusing in on the rear uh, of the aircraft, just finishing off the tail pretty much. So to go ahead and get started for this, we want to go ahead and grab ourselves some wooden uh, trap doors. Now we're going to place down a wooden trap door on the second uh, green stake plate block, back from this dark oak wood stair here for the tail. We're then going to place down a dark oak wood slab after that. So a dark oak wood slab after this... Um, wooden trap door, followed by two green stake plate blocks, a spruce wood plank, and then we're also going to go and place down a mossy cobblestone wall on the end here, on top of this cobblestone wall right here. And actually, we're going to break this cobblestone wall, and it should be a mossy cobblestone wall as well. Um, so once that's all done there, we can go ahead and continue on to our next uh, row up. So from this, we're going to go ahead and place down a spruce wood plank on top of this mossy cobblestone wall here. We then want to place down a green stake plate block on top of the spruce wood plank, and then a dark oak wood stair come off the uh, green snake loop block just like that. Now on this green snake loop block here on both sides, we're going to place down our uh, banner that we made. So it's going to go on both sides like so. Once that's done, we then want to go ahead and also grab a sign and place it down on both sides of this spruce wood plank. Go ahead and up to our next row. We're going to place down a spruce wood plank on top of this one right here. Again, this a sign on both sides of it. And we also want to go ahead and grab ourselves a dark oak wood stair and place it down come off the spruce wood plank like so for the tail there. Once that's all done, we're going to need to go ahead and grab ourselves some green carpet. We're going to place down one, two uh, green carpets here. One and two, one, one, just like that on the quartz top slabs. So just like that on top of all the quartz top slabs. And we also want to go ahead and go up to the front here. So the front, we do have a little bit on the cockpit we want to add. So we're going to grab some narrow brick stairs and an end rod. We're going to place down two narrow brick stairs here. So one on top of this first light gray stained glass block, one on top of the second one. And then we're going to place down an end rod on top of this dark brick with stair. Once that's all complete, that's going to do it there for the Hawker Hunter um, F.6 in its kind of standard, it's kind of pretty much in just a standard green camouflage. If you guys are interested in obviously continuing on to the landed version or to uh, go ahead and uh, put the camouflage on, we're going to go ahead and move on to that next, start with the camouflage. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and move on to the camouflage.
All right, guys, so putting the camouflage in the aircraft is really not too difficult, um, but, you know, it does require a little bit of, you know, paying close attention, kind of knowing what you guys want to have in the end. So, for the uh, aircraft, I would definitely recommend if you're putting this camouflage on, just looking up on Google, like, the uh, Hawker Hunter F6, and a lot of pictures you'll see will have this kind of gray and green camo, and you can kind of you look at that and kind of use it to base off uh, your design, but... I'm going to kind of do a little bit of what I did over here on this one, just kind of give you guys a general idea, a general idea of how I go about placing it um, and everything like that. So to go ahead and get started here, we want to go ahead and take a look at these mossy cobblestone walls. We can go ahead and replace these mossy cobblestone walls right here with cobblestone walls. And we can also replace down the polished anesthetic blocks behind them, or the uh, green snake blocks behind them with polished anesthetic to just kind of give it a little bit more green color. Uh, we can just go ahead and basically take this design and wrap it around. So we're just going to kind of do like a little bit of a swirl and kind of continue to angle it all the way around over here to this side. So you can see it kind of goes on this side and kind of goes down like that. And then maybe we want to start a little bit of a swirl on this side. So we can start here and kind of take this up here and make sure we're, you know, replacing the blocks. You want to make sure that you're trying to keep it nice and consistent all the way through. Um, we can even go to the extent of taking these, these uh, zombie heads here and replace them with skeleton skulls to also show that green color. And we can have this go ahead and go over to the air side here. And this over here on the air side will kind of run down onto the wing. So we can just kind of have it come out this way. And for carpets, we can go ahead and grab some light gray carpets as well. And use those to our advantage here. So put some light gray carpets in. And get to this down here. And maybe have it kind of taper off a little bit on the end here. So something kind of like that. You can see it kind of tapers off there all the way around. And if we want to as well, we can also have some more kind of, you know, uh, light gray kind of in this section too. If we want to add a little bit more, we feel it looks a little too green right there. So we can add some more right there. And uh, we can even have this maybe connect up to this row right here. So it kind of wraps around here. It does something kind of like that. So you can kind of go crazy with that. And then the wing is on the side here, so we have this blotch that kind of comes down here on the wing. You know, it kind of leaves this wing kind of open, so we can even add some light gray out here on the wing a little bit, just to kind of give it a little bit more color. And do something kind of like that for the wing there. And then over here for this side, I went ahead and kind of had a big splotch kind of run from the middle of my wing. So for this, you know, just kind of take some snow brick slabs, kind of mix them in here a little bit um, for our wing. So kind of big, I kind of went a little bit too far out so I'm going to go and kind of replace some of these slabs get myself a little bit closer so right here and this is going to go ahead and go up this way and I want to have it connect up to the fuselage and kind of flow into the fuselage here so it's going to go ahead and kind of flow up in this direction here and it's even go, going to go into the tail a little bit on the beginning part of it and start to wrap into that a little bit so you can see the splotch kind of works its way out to the side here and uh, one thing I didn't do is I didn't cover the flaps with any gray. I think the flaps look really good highlighted in the spruce wood, so I decided to keep it like that. But of course, if you want to, you can obviously change that. You can maybe even use um, some stone slabs for it in its place. So you can put stone slabs in here uh, to kind of re re you know kind of replicate that color, but it also shows a little bit of a difference in the flaps and everything. But it's up to you guys on what you guys want to do for that. And then over here on this side, again, we're just going to go and take the um, you know polished anesthetic wrap it around to this section here and since it kind of runs into the randle we're not going to really continue it much further than that one thing though to make sure is that you're only mixing it with the green and the gray we do not want to touch the quartz as the quartz is supposed to be basically stay quartz and completely white um in the back section here uh we can even go and switch this up a little bit so we can go and replace one of these cobblestone walls maybe this zombie head right here on the back for the tail and maybe the stone brick slab here and maybe we can even replace this cobblestone wall right there on the tail uh, we can also even, you know, put a little bit of polished anesthetic up here in the tailpiece section as well. And this can maybe come down and kind of connect to this right here. And maybe it kind of started over here on this side. So we can have it kind of roll down on this side as well. And kind of come from maybe this section there. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a whole lot you can do for it um, to kind of make the camouflage. But that's kind of a general idea of what I did for it. Also, don't forget about your horizontal stabilizers. You can also use some light gray wool here kind of add a little bit of gray to it and everything like that uh but anyways once you have that kind of complete you should get something that kind of looks like this you can see it's a little bit different from my other design i did over there but that's the beauty of it you're able to kind of make your own camouflage and make them all a little bit different if you have a couple of these in the same area so anyways that's it for the camouflage and how it's really done feel free to kind of go crazy do uh, your own designs here 
for it in your own camouflage maybe fill in spaces you think are a little too uh, green here like this area right here might be a little bit too green but uh, I'm going to keep it like that so uh, feel free to go crazy with the camouflage and with that we're going to move on to making the landed version for all those of you that are interested in um, putting the uh, landing gear on. Alrighty guys, so moving on to putting the landing gear onto the aircraft. Now if you guys paid uh, close attention in the beginning of the video and built this thing um, off the ground at the level I told you, you should have your aircraft that looks pretty close to the ground and everything like that, something like this. Now again, referring back to the front up here, we have our iron trap doors. There are a total of two blocks off the ground. If we go ahead and go toward the front here for the black wall block, we have a total of four blocks between the ground and the black wall block. So just another kind of reference point there to give you guys an idea of how high off the ground this is. If it's any more or any less than that, your aircraft is either too high or too low, so you may need, you're gonna have to adjust it to get this to work. Anyways, to go ahead and get started here, we wanna go ahead and start by breaking out some blocks here. So for this, we're gonna go ahead and start off the section right here behind this, um, this uh, quartz upside down stair here. We're gonna break the three quartz full blocks directly behind it, like so. So we're just gonna go get rid of those blocks all together uh, and break the space. We then want to go ahead and go inside the space and up above it and we're going to place down a row of three of quartz full blocks just to fill that space in so we keep a nice consistent color. You could probably even use gray if you want to, but I'm just going to go ahead and use quartz for it. We're then going to go ahead and go to the uh, section here in between these two quartz full blocks. We're going to place down a cobblestone wall followed by a second cobblestone wall that goes down. We're going to place down a stone brick upside down stair if it's back facing toward the rear of the aircraft followed by a block of coal that's coming down from the stone brick stair at a bit of an angle like that. Uh, we will also want to go ahead and grab ourselves a lever. We're going to place down a lever that's flicked downward on the back of the stair. And we will need to delete this iron trap door. Um, it will continue to open if we have it, the uh, lever activated like that. So we can just go and break that um, iron trap door. And we're also going to place a stone button on both sides of this block of, this, uh, block of coal. Um, up here in the front, we're just going to place down a white banner coming down off the back of this uh, stair right here. And once you have that done, that's kind of it for the front landing gear wheel like that. And with that, let's go ahead and move on to the rear wheels. Alright guys, so moving on to the rear landing wheels, we obviously have two back wheels. We're going to be going ahead and building the uh, right side's wheel, and then you guys can copy the left side wheel over. So to go ahead and kind of take a look at this, we're going to go ahead and start off by going to this section down here. Now you can see that we have this row of three of quartz top subs here, kind of in the midsection of the wing, um, a little bit before the midsection. We're gonna go ahead and break the iron trap door that's right here and place on a cobblestone wall in its place. Now on the bottom of this cobblestone wall, we're gonna go ahead and place down a stone brick, uh, upside down stair like this. We're also gonna go ahead and need to grab ourselves some nether brick stairs. And we're gonna place down a nether brick stair, which is going to be just like this on the bottom of the stone brick stair and upside down stair up, or a regular nether brick stair right behind that upside down or the right behind the nether brick stair here on the bottom here we're just going to place down two nether brick stairs back to back like that to go ahead and kind of complete the wheel here once that's all uh, complete there we're going to go and grab ourselves some um, quartz stairs we're going to place down a quartz stair come off the back of this stone brick stair like this and there quartz stair right behind that stair and then on the bottom of these two stairs a row of two of quartz top sabs like that now once that's all complete, up on top here we're going to go ahead and need to break a little bit of stuff. So for this we're going to go ahead and break this quartz top sub right here. We're also going to break this quartz <clears throat> upside down stair here. And we also want to break this quartz ups upside down stair right there. And I believe, yeah, we are actually going to go ahead and go all the way into this section too. And we're going to break these two quartz full blocks and this iron trap door. So we're breaking a pretty good space out uh, of the aircraft. Now in this section here to replace it, we want to go ahead and start off by grabbing ourselves a stone brick top half sab, place it coming off this cobblestone wall like this, and then a stone brick top sab coming off of that for a little bit of support for the leg there. And then we just want to take iron trap doors and place them down in the remaining space in between here to kind of show the uh, space that the wheel would fold into, like so in the, into the uh, fuselage of the aircraft. And uh, once that's done, that's it for the landing gear here. You're going to take the same design and flip it over to the air side. And just like that, we have both of the landing gear complete, the one on the left side and the one over here on the right side. Once that's all done there, that is going to do it for the uh, Hawker Hunter uh, F.6 fighter aircraft. Hope you guys did enjoy this tutorial. I think this design came out really good. It was a pretty cool aircraft. We have another uh, British aircraft to add to our um, ever-growing line of Cold War and Modern Warfare jets. So pretty awesome and um, everything like that. Um, if you guys do abuse this tutorial, I do ask you guys give me proper credit for this. Be the from a son's build, tweet to my channel or this video if this does appear on any social media sites. Just be sure to get proper credit for the build. That's all I ask for doing these tutorials. It helps my channel grow. 
and it uh, continues to keep me inspired to keep on posting these types of tutorials. So as long as you guys give me credit for it, you're free to use it for whatever projects you guys are working on. And with that, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Garrett 2.4, and I'll see you guys next time.